Hello there, and welcome back to Dead Cells. As blasé as it may be, I think what I'll plan to do with this series of videos is the sort of typical thing with these sorts of roguelike games, where I'll be doing one run per day, assuming it's a decent length run. If I'm dead within like 5 or 10 minutes, I'll just start up another one right then and there. But otherwise, one run per day, see how far I can get. And that should stretch the amount of content that is currently within the game until they start releasing more, hopefully. So let's just start up a new run. I uh, quit at the very beginning of the previous one. Not a huge fan of how the run starts immediately, including the timer, so if you want to do a speed run to get past those hourglass doors, you need to be booking it right from the get-go. Yeah, let's go with Bow. I feel like that's a little bit better unless I get a shield with some really good abilities. Another thing that annoys me a little bit is the fact that you don't actually have access to the upgrades that you purchase with cells, as well as the ability to pick new stuff until you've gotten to the second area of the game, or really the, uh, the first break area. And that makes the start of the game a little bit too samey. Ooh, I really like that electrical whip last time. Yeah, let's go with it. Swap out my rusty sword. Because it means the first area in any run is going to be pretty much the same, you know, aside from its layout. It'd be nice if you had the option to skip this first area, or get through it more quickly, or something like that. But I'm only just supposing that's how I'll react to it at the moment. Maybe it won't end up being too big of a deal in the long run. I'm just worried that it will be. You can tell that I'm getting a little bit more used to each of the enemy's attacks. Well, really, attack, since uh, each enemy type pretty much only has the one. These guys have the leap, the bowmen have the bow shot, the grenade boys have the grenade. Electric whip comes in, oh, real handy here, but he can also aim upwards at me, so I can't really cheese him. You know what? That's a pretty good shield. Has a pretty potent damaging and stun effect. Should be pretty useful if I'm fighting groups. Mm. See if I can take down Grenade Boy from afar. Ooh, so much for getting used to these guys' attacks, eh? I really need to make use of my Electric Whip's range a bit more. Keep forgetting how godlike that is. Ah. Uh, but sometimes it's auto-attacking is a little bit annoying. I didn't want to strike towards that gremlin there. I wanted to finish off the shield one first, but it auto-targeted for me. Let's see, another secret portal? Yes. I'm going to wait to do that just to see if I can encounter any recovery here. That would really help me. I also need to remember I have this ground pound. I haven't tried that out in combat yet. I probably should next time I have the opportunity. Alright, one of my three stats. Health and strength both both seem incredibly important. Increased chance to use skills seems less so, unless you just have like a really good skill. Let's go with health to start off with, since it also increases my current health, not just my max health. And I'm a little bit low. More gold? I always take that. I actually have quite a bit of gold at the start of this run. That's kind of surprising. Been lucky with the gold drop so far, and hey, can make use of that little bit of Metroidvania stuff. Vine to enter a new area in the first area. Really interested to see how they carry that forward, and oh, you know what? This is probably an extra exit if I were to go through the regular part of the level, ignore the climbable vine. I would probably just end up in the regular swamp. But taking this alternate exit here, I can go to the toxic swamp, a new place. So in that way, it has the multiple different areas per like area slot. So like the second area can be a swamp or a poisonous swamp, much like how in The Binding of Isaac, you have like the regular basement, uh, the fiery basement, and a few other variants. But here, rather than it being random, you can choose which one you go to based off of the upgrades you've collected so far. That's a really interesting way of handling progression, and changing things up as you do more and more runs. 
But uh, before I enter any new level, I want to explore this place to its fullest and probably try out the secret challenge. Oh, that's awesome. That stun lasts for a long time and I didn't realize I could uh, deflect projectiles. Unfortunately, it doesn't make them harm the enemies, which is a little bit disappointing, but hey, it is what it is. Still pretty useful as a defensive option. Ooh, I got it a bit too early there. Try that again. Yep. And then get the stun up. Definitely useful for cutting down groups. And stun for everything in the vicinity with that flashbang. That should be handy if I can actually remember to use it for once. Oh, another reason to explore the floors fully. All these sorts of upgrades. Hey, is that an infantry bow? It is. Ooh, do I get rid of my shield? You know what, I never really get a chance to use this all that much, so I think I'll swap out my shield. As useful as it has been. So this thing gets a huge damage boost the closer I am to the enemy. And yep, adds a damage- oh, boost. So I rolled there, but I still got hit, so the roll does seem to have iframes, I think, but they end pretty quickly. Yeah, there I'm pretty sure I iframed through a strike, but I didn't in the previous instance. Hmm. Bow and infinite arrows, that sounds like an incredibly good blueprint. I'll have to see about investing into that when I get to the break area. Is it just me, or is this first stage longer than the previous iterations I've done? It seems like it. Maybe that's just me, though. Yeah, most of these gold doors don't seem too worthwhile. Wait a minute, can I destroy it? Oh. That's interesting. So I can choose to forgo paying the price and break down the gold door, but I suffer a curse. In this case, if I take a single hit, I will die, which, um, given how good I've been at avoiding hits so far, isn't good. But I can lift the curse if I offer blood to the gods in the form of ten enemies. Uh, let's see if I can't do that before I exit the area. I really don't want to enter a new one with such a deleterious debuff. Let's see, anything worth picking up here? Now this would be useful if I could actually take damage, but at the moment I can't. Freeze grenades will probably help me avoid taking damage, so yeah, let's pick that up and replace the regular grenade. So that makes me breaking down that door kind of completely pointless, aside from the little bit of knowledge I gained from doing so. Where was the secret portal? It was close over here, wasn't it? I'm not sure if it's shown on the map or not. Uh, let's see, it was definitely earlier on. Oh, it might be that orange portal looking thing on the map. The blue ones are the regular teleporters. Yeah, there it is. It's shown as a more proper portal on the full map. Alright, let's see what the challenge is. Same one as previous, kill all enemies and make it to the exit without getting hit. Well, I especially have to not get hit given that debuff. So uh, just scout out the enemies. Okay, this would be a good spot to use my freeze grenades. I do have to go somewhat quickly now that I'm here. But with the freeze grenades, I might just be able to do it. And the insane reach on my electrical whip, of course! Yep, I didn't freeze all of them, unfortunately. Can I just cheese these guys? No, so it doesn't automatically strike upwards, unfortunately, and that challenge mark is actually covering my field of view. It's a bit aggravating. Okay, I froze the dangerous dudes. For my stun grenade, okay. I'm not sure if I'm going fast enough to be able to do this, but so far I'm handling it pretty well, I think. Lob another- oh, it doesn't freeze them if they're all the way down there, damn it. Uh, okay. Wait, but I should be able to cheese them if they're down there. Yes, exactly. Good thing there aren't any archers on the opposite side, otherwise this would be a little bit more dangerous, but... I'm gonna head down here, because I do want to try and beat the challenge, which means I gotta be quick. As dangerous as that can be. Alright, so their shields also block grenades, and stun grenades, good to know. Okay, uh, I probably run out of time, I'm going way too slowly here. Did 
Take down these dudes, then I can deal with Shield Boy easily enough. Yep, okay. Good sofa. Not exactly making good use of my grenades here, that's for sure. Ah, oh, these Shield Boys are really annoying. That's probably exactly why they put them there, make them difficult to deal with if you're being careful and slow. Oh, there were two of them stacked on top of each other. That's tricky. Yeah, using your active skills, especially if they're as good as these grenades, is definitely the way to making your life a lot easier in this game. Okay. Oh, right, I just realized uh, I'm no longer under the effects of that curse, but... I failed the challenge, damn it. Oh well, I was about to run out of time anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Um... Let's see... There wasn't anything... Actually, no, I do want to purchase that one amulet from the shop, so let me just stop over there right quick and pick that up since I think I have enough gold for it. I think it was 2k? Yeah, exactly. And it replaces my old prisoner's collar, which I'm fine with. Although watch it turn out that the prisoner's collar does have some sort of like really secret use. Like maybe you have to have it equipped the entire run to access a secret area. That's something they could add in the future if it's not in already and that would be pretty cool. Up the challenge to access new content. Alright, so let's head to the new area, the toxic sewers. And hopefully it is standardized that there is a break area in between every area. It seems like there is since the time is currently paused. Probably don't want to drop down any further, not just yet. Although I'm not even sure if I could. Alright, let's see about getting some upgrades. So what was that about infinite arrows? Okay, so it is just straight up a bow with infinite ammo. Presumably it's a bit weaker, but... Always having a ranged attack, that sounds useful. Was I investing in anything else last time? It doesn't look like it. So yeah, let's put all my 14 cells into- oh right, the assassin's dagger. I would like to try out new primary weapons, so let's finish that off just to have it unlocked and then put my five remaining ones into that infinite ammo bow. Seriously, that seems like it could be incredibly good assuming the damage isn't utter shit. Oh right, and I actually have the dagger right away. I forgot about that, that they give you a free one. Yeah, let's uh, get rid of my electrical whip. Ooh, that is a very fast move set. Kind of the opposite of my whip. Faster, probably more damaging. What were the stats? Ah uh, yeah, more... the same damage, more DPS. And the whole enemies exploding on death bonus ability, which seems very good. I think that the green abilities are randomly generated. And uh, of course, way shorter range. So we'll see how I handle this. Because uh, I do have to drop down to continue. And... You know, I just realized I still had my healing flask use. I completely forgot I had that, whoops. Oh well, might as well still interact with this for the full heal. Alright, let's see what the toxic sewers are like. I think I called it the toxic swamp. I think that's just what my mind auto-completed that as. But nope, it's a sewer level. That's fun. Probably don't want to drop down into that toxic pit. Just a guess. Ooh, that is a very satisfying sound. That clinking on, I guess, crystal since they're like crystal zombies. Doesn't seem to stun as well. But the- oh, damage is quite nice. New enemy type, scorpions. And weird grub things, are they gonna explode? Generally when I see like enemies with growths, they- okay. So explodes into spores, which then explode on death. Probably should have made use of my bow there, shouldn't I have? Oh well. I can take a little bit of damage since there's that carrot back there. I have to remember to pick that up once I'm a little bit more hurt. Mm, I do. Oh, what? Oh, they poison. Where did you come from? Were you just like 
uh, in line with the Acha, and that's why I didn't see it, because I did not realize that was them at all. My bad. Oh, they just pop up out of the ground from some spots. That's a dick move. Use two arrow shots since they're very strong at close range. Oh, I'm taking way more damage than I should be. Case in point. That's what happens when, you, when you're learning new enemy types, I suppose. So yeah, these guys I can't stun, at least with the dagger. That's probably the downside of that thing. I forgot about the exploding spores after death, so this one looks like it's not going to go anywhere quickly. Or well, it is going to go somewhere, and that place is death. Um, let's go pick up that carrot right now, just to give me a little bit more survivability. Make sure that's unlocked. It's over here, wasn't it? Yeah. Thank you, Wallcat. Ooh, 51 HP. That gives me a few more hits to deal with. Wait. I thought I only had limited ammo. What happens if- Oh god. I really did not want to deal with that. And the scorpions have a ranged attack, which means I'm in a little bit of a precarious position. Which is why I have those freeze grenades. Why do I keep forgetting about them? God damn it. So yeah, very close... Very powerful at close range. Oh, I misunderstood the ammo thing entirely. My bad. So, ammo regenerates. So, the limited ammunition is not for, like, conserving through a level. It's just limiting how much damage you can output at one instant. Okay. That completely changes up how useful range stuff is. Namely, it makes range stuff way more valuable if you can just use it as much as you want. I really like this bow because it gives you a pretty powerful ranged attack as well as an incredibly powerful close range attack. So far this seems like the most useful bow. And that actually makes the infinite ammo bow a little bit less useful unless you're just in a spammy mood. Yeah, let me just use that healing flask now. Just to be safe. I don't want to die with it still on me, that's like the worst thing in this sort of game. Ooh, and a cat. I'll use you when I'm a little bit more hurt. I do like that you have the option of just busting open a door. You don't have to open it politely or anything. I'm gonna pick you up now just so I don't have to return later. It's not difficult to do that in this game thanks to the teleporters, but I'd still not rather have to bother with that. So I'll take a little bit less healing just for that convenience. We'll see if that bites me in the butt or not. Uh, it seems... actually there's two paths forward. One here and one further up. Let's check this one. Ah, uh, yeah, you have to go through really quickly if you want to access these doors. As I postulated before, you probably have to ignore most of the enemies simply because killing them takes too much time. I will have to try that at one point just to see what goodies are behind there to see if they're worth it or not. Seriously, look at that damage. That, oh god. Hi there. I really don't like the- Oh, damn it. I swung a little bit too slowly there. I should have just spammed. I really don't like the fact that the scorpions just hop out of nowhere. That's kind of a little bit bullshit, I think, actually. And yeah, again, when I actually make use of my grenades, it makes this a lot more manageable. Ooh, close one. Alright, looks like there's an upgrade over there. I want to pick that up post-haste. Ooh, I couldn't freeze that dude. Shit. Okay, let's take a little bit of a break and, uh... Collect my head here. Take down the student ranged. Good. I, I, I don't really care about speed since I'm already going slow enough that I can't access those hourglass doors. I'd rather be slow and steady and actually make it through. Alright, did that just fine. Hmm, not a fan of how... Did that poison me? Oh, I don't think it did. Maybe you have to stand in it for long enough. I'm not gonna... Oh, I forgot to pick the upgrade up. I'm not gonna try it out here when I'm at such low HP. The, uh... Auto grab with the ledge is a bit too aggressive for my liking. If I want to make it to that lower ledge without grabbing that lower platform without grabbing this ledge, it's rather difficult. 
See what I mean? I'm just trying to press left and it's super aggressive. But, uh... Oh, no! Yep, okay. As I thought, I really shouldn't have tested that out, but now I know for sure. So you can stand in it for like a second and be fine, but any longer and you're gonna eat poison damage. So, one difference between stun and freeze is that freeze seems like it does more damage to the enemies. Uh, your hits do more damage, but you break them out of the freeze. Whereas the stun ends up lasting longer, but you don't get that damage boost. So that's the functional difference between the two. Let's see, anyone else in the area? Doesn't look like it, so I shouldn't even need to use any of my skills. Yep, I'm fine. Oh! Fuck you, scorpion assholes. Let's see... Ooh, Flashbang 3. That is pretty much a pure upgrade. And another secret area there. Presumably I can access that from that coffin over there. Once I've gotten far enough to unlock that ability. Let's see what's over this way first. Ah, the old sewers. I think that too is a new area. So let's see what the other exit in this level leads to. Ooh, Greed Shield. It is a very powerful shield, so if you're adept with blocking, you could uh, do a lot with this. It blocks, blocks attacks and shakes out any loose gold from the enemy's teeth once per enemy. And... wait, throws a grenade? Is that something that happens when I block? Interesting. As useful as the bow has been, I want to test out the shield. Maybe not with this grouping. I'm just gonna wait for them to clump together and then lob a freeze grenade, I think. Just to be safe. Okay, I'll test it out on this grub. Their attack isn't too bad. Yep, that is exactly what it does. You automatically throw a grenade when blocking. Not bad. Oh, uh, I keep forgetting about that explosion after death, but uh, I like my ranged option more. So I'll stick with the infantry bow. Let's see... Ugh, all too rich for my blood. Really wish I had saved up that gold. Oh well. Maybe I should just head towards the new level since I'm so low on HP and I could really use a break. Uh, I'm gonna risk doing a little bit more exploring though. Who knows, there might be stat up somewhere. Okay, so again, these are a little bit too rich for my blood at the moment. So it seems like if you want to make purchases in a run, you really have to conserve your gold. Oh no, 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 no. Okay, suddenly appearing bat flask explosives. I'm not entirely sure what that enemy type was about. That could have turned out much worse than it did though. And just deal with you at ranged. Oh wait, the ammo is not recovering. Is it based off of kills? It must be, because as soon as I collected that enemy's cell, I recharged my ammo. Oh no! Okay, well... Took a bit of stun, but no damage, and I'm out of the hair of the scorpion. Uh, let's use another freeze grenade. Okay, and see what's behind this food. More gold, nice. I would have liked healing since I'm exploring a little bit more, but... If I just head to the new area, I'll probably be fine. Ah, that's what that is. That's what that weird bat-flying explosive creature looks like when it's not coming after you. Uh, yeah, you know what? I really don't want to risk dying here. I'd like this run to continue on a little bit longer, so... Let's just head towards the exit. I'm assuming it'll take me to a rest area. If not, then, uh, joke's on me, I suppose. Yep, okay, I'm in a rest area. Good. Whew. Alright, what do I want to put cells to? Hmm, oh, freezing enemies, that sounds incredibly good. 
I was gonna say I should probably just invest in the rest of this infinite ammo bow. But I'd rather have a freeze bow. Bingo. And, uh, hmm. You know what? Might as well have this thing unlocked for use. So I'll put the rest of my cells toward that. Two more and it's unlocked. Good. Ooh. Yeah, let's go with the ice bow. Although, you know what? No, I already have the ability to pretty freely freeze enemies with my ice grenade. What is its special ability? Slows down all nearby enemies when the victim thaws out. And fires an arrow upward. What? Let me uh, try this out. Oh, so it fires two arrows, one straight on and one diagonally upwards. That plus the fact that, uh, wait, what was its special ability again? Yeah, it applies a slow effect to any enemies nearby when an enemy frozen with this thaws out. So this could be very good for dealing with crowds, but, um, I don't know. I really like the damage of this infantry bow. I, I think that's more useful at the moment, so... Crossbow, I'll try out later, I think. Get that good healing juice. Ah, breathe deeply. Alright, let's see what the old sewers are like. Yeah, they're pretty sewer-like. Looks like it's uh, a little bit more run down than the previous ones. Maybe more toxic pits and more platforming to avoid them? If that first room is any indication. It's also actually pretty creepy. The lack of the, uh, not upbeat, but... Whoa. That sure is a chest. How do I get to you, my friend? Question mark? Uh, as I was saying, the lack of, like, um, a fast-paced music and just the creepy breathing noises in the background make this area way tenser than the previous ones. Let's see, is there, like, a secret way to get to you? Let me just examine the environment here closely. Maybe if I head down this way. I really want to figure what that's about. Oh, it's not even a secret. Cursed treasure. Hey, you there, open me. I've been naughty. Hit me real hard. Ooh, you into that shit, are you? <laughs> A treasure chest after my own heart. Oh, do I risk it or do I leave this for later? Because this could end up hitting me with a negative enough side effect that it'll end up dooming this run, which so far is going pretty well. Uh, I gotta see what this is about. Curiosity killed the cat and me as well. Ah, so it's the same curse as before. I wonder if that's the only curse that's in the game at the moment. And they'll just add more later. So you get a bunch of gold and a random item. Might as well try out the bear trap. I haven't used it in combat before. Uh, I think I like my freeze grenades more than I do the flashbangs, honestly. So bear trap... Wait, does it stun an enemy or just slow them? Uh, it immobilizes them. So presumably, uh, hmm. presumably they can still attack, they just can't move. So if they don't have a ranged attack, that pretty much takes them out of the combat for a little bit. And it makes them take more damage. So that would be good to use on an elite enemy, for example. As long as it's not the uh, elite archer. Hello. That is some interesting magic you got, you got going on there. Hmm. I'm not a fan. It's a, a fungus wizard. First I've seen that. There we go. I just gotta go in quickly and take him out. Oh! There we go. Yeah, you're a primary target to take down when I see you. <sighs> and there goes the run. I, uh... <laughs> I kind of immediately forgot that the curse was on me and that I should play a little bit more carefully. Whoops. 
That was kind of an ignominious end to this one, but hey, that's the name of the game sometimes. Still, I unlocked quite a bit of new items and saw two new areas. So it was a worthy run, even if it was cut short.